we're going to finish up all of our quadrilaterals. So we're going to work on both trapezoids and kites. So remember, go back to this graphic organizer, which was on your parallelogram notes. Okay, so let's write about it. Trapezoids. On trapezoids, um, you have that, where does it say? Okay, opposites, well, we'll say base sides and mid-segment are parallel. So your bases and your mid-segment, which I'll tell you what that is in a minute, mid-segment um, are parallel. So what that means is up here, this is going to be parallel to this one, is going to be parallel to that one. Those will always be parallel. Your bases are your top and your, oh man, I didn't change my eraser back. There we go. Your bases are the, this one and this one. They're always your parallel sides. So on an isosceles, it's this one and this one. It's your parallel sides. And then the mid segment is right in the middle um, and it is also parallel. So mid segments are parallel. It's the same thing for this one, too. Um, this is parallel to... Actually, I need to move that. This is parallel to that. And it does have a mid-segment also. It's just uh, that would get too confusing with our diagonals that we're going to have to talk about. So isosceles trapezoids do have a mid-segment also. We just aren't marking it on this picture. But it would also be parallel. All right, next thing is that consecutive angles are supplementary. Oh, I forgot to write this down here, too. Okay. Now, consecutive... Well, I should say on the side. They're not all... I should say opposite base angles are supplementary, because they're not all supplementary. It's not all consecutive angles. We should say opposite base angles are supplementary. Okay, so what that means is that these angles would add to be 180 and these angles would add to be 180. These would not necessarily be true, so we're not going to put those, but your two sides would. These would also be 180, and these would also be 180. And then last is a special one. Um, I don't want it to interfere with anything else, so I need a different color. Hmm. Let's do area purple, orange. I guess I could do yellow, but that's a weird way to write it. Um, but what it is is how to figure out the length of your mid segment. So your mid segment is always equal to half the length of your two bases added together. And it's the same for both. Remember that the isosceles one doesn't have it drawn, but it does have mid-segments. So what it means is to figure out the length of this, that's your mid-segment, you will do half of your two bases added together, which your base is this one and this one. So to figure it out, you would add this length and this length together and then divide by two. That's how you know how to find that middle one. So that's all for regular trapezoids, but then isosceles trapezoids have a few other um, things that go with them. So in isosceles trapezoids, non-bases are congruent. So in other words, this side is going to be congruent to this side. So non-bases are congruent. Um, another thing is that your diagonals are congruent. So this is going to be the same length. And it's the whole thing. It's not like this little piece. It's the entire diagonal is congruent to the other entire diagonal. 
So your diagonals are congruent. And lastly, is that your base angles are congruent. Is that, oh, orange. Base angles. So this angle is going to be the same as this one. And then this one is going to be the same as this one. So base angles are congruent. All right, so that's it for trapezoids. And then we got to do kites. And actually, there should be a fourth one on the kite. I left one off on accident. Um, and the wording for the kite is going to be kind of complicated. So um, please, for the kite, pay more attention to the picture than the way that I write this. Um, so first of all, your consecutive sides are congruent. Oh, that was supposed to be in green, sorry. So what that means by consecutive sides is this top side is going to be the same length as this one, and then these two bottom ones will be the same. Um, it doesn't mean that these two consecutive sides will be congruent, but this way and this way they are. Alrighty, and then... Um, Opposite side, what's a way to write that? Um, op, I could say one set of opposite sides are congruent. One set opposite so, uh, angles, not sides, sorry, angles are congruent. So one set of opposite angles are congruent. What that means is this angle here is going to be the same as this angle here. Your top and your bottom won't be, but those two side angles will be congruent. All right, next is that your, um, what's the way to put this? Your vertical diagonal bisects your horizontal diagonal. Vertical diagonal bisects horizontal diagonal. And that's only when it's oriented this way. But what that means is this side is the same length as this side. Your top and your bottom obviously aren't, but your two sides that way are. And the last thing, like I said, we really needed to put four, and I apologize about that, is that diagonals are perpendicular. So what that means is this is a 90 degree angle here, which also means this one's 90 because they're vertical, it means this one's 90 because they're supplementary, and it means this one's 90 because they're supplementary. So just like we did whenever we did rhombi and squares, it's the same type of thing, but on a kite. All right, so that is all of our stuff as far as this graphic organizer, and it is finally completed. I do not suggest that you throw this away because it will really help you on your test. If you're a visual person, study this top part. If you are not, study this bottom part. Um, but this will is really all the studying that you need to do for your test unless you need to remember how to set things up. But your entire test will basically be using all of these properties. So let's go to trapezoids and kites now. And we do have definitions of these things. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So that's what these arrows are showing you is those are your parallel sides. Then isosceles trapezoids are a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, but also the legs are congruent. That's what I should have called it on your other page, sorry. Legs are congruent, base angles are congruent, and the diagonals are congruent. All right, so all of the above and legs, base angles, and diagonals are all congruent. So remember that these are legs. And this is a leg also. The, the top one has legs also. It's the sides that aren't necessarily parallel or are not parallel. All right, so now we're going to use some of this knowledge to figure this stuff out. So if we're going to find D, we do need to figure out B first. And remember that these two angles are congruent, so this is also 125 degrees. So to figure out D, both of these together should always add to 180. So 180 minus 125, that will give us the measure of angle D. 
So the measure of angle D is 55 degrees. Alrighty, on this one, find the measure of L. And this is showing you that this is an isosceles. Um, this one, we were assuming it was isosceles because it's the only way that you could figure out D. Um, L, we're, we are told it's isosceles. That's why they give you two of the fives. They're congruent sides. Um, so if K is 40, J is also 40, but these together would add to be 180 degrees. So 180 minus 40 tells you that the measure of angle L is 140 degrees. All right, mid segments, mid segments. It's the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs of a trapezoid. All right, so the mid segment is this right here, and it's always equal to half um, the sum of the two bases. So this would be base one, this would be base two. This one is half the length of both bases added together. So now we're gonna practice that. This says that HJ is 32, which is here, and that LK is 60, which is here. So that's B1 and B2, B1 and B2. So we will do half of 32 plus 60. 32 plus 60 is 92. And then split that in half, and we know that M N is 46. All right, H J is 18, but then it tells you that M N is 28. And we're trying to find L K. I should really do different colors. I'll do it like this. That's L K. M N. We're trying to figure out that one. There we go. Okay, so we know that half. Oh, wait, we know that MN is equal to half of HJ plus LK. So now we just plug those things in. 28 is equal to half of 18 plus LK. So what that means is I'm going to multiply all this times 2 to get rid of that half. Well, you could distribute a half, but then you'd have to deal with fractions with LK. It makes life easier if you just multiply everything by 2 to make that go away. So 28 times two is 56. And then you have 18 plus LK because that two gets rid of the half. Then subtract 18 on both sides. And LK is 38. Now we have some kite problems. So if W, X, Y, Z is a kite, find the measure of angle C, angle Z. Remember I told you that these angles are congruent, so we really are figuring out both of them. All angles of a quadrilateral have to add up to be 360. So you can add them all together and set them equal to 360 if that's what you want to do. It just kind of depends. Um, or you could do 360 minus these two angles, 80 and 60 and then divide by two, whichever way you want to do it. But the real way that you're supposed to do it is you add them all together and set them equal to 360. So 2x is equal, oh, plus 140. Subtract 140 from both sides. So 2x is equal to 220. Divide by two. And that means that the measure of angle Z, which is what my X was, is 110 degrees. Alrighty, so we need to find the length of VC. Remember that these are 90 degree angles. So now we just have this right triangle that we need to solve for. We're gonna use Pythagorean theorem. That's how you find the missing side of a triangle. So 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to BC squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. 144 plus 25 is 169. Take the square root of both sides, and BC is equal to 13. Oh, 
Okay, so we're going to find the measure of JRK. JRK is this angle right here. Remember that those angles are all 90 degrees, so this is 90 degrees. All right, then it says RJ is 3. That's this one. That RK is 10. That's this one. Find JK, which is this one. So that's kind of what we just did. It's using Pythagorean theorem. So 3 squared plus 10 squared is equal to JK squared. 3 squared is 9. 10 squared is 100. 100 plus 9 is 109. Take the square root of both sides. And one on, square root of 109 is as reduced as it can be. So that's it's just the square root of 109. All right, next. GHJ. So G, GHJ. So it's this top pole angle right here. Is 90. GKJ. G. J. So this is this whole angle down here is 110. So we need to find HGK. HGK. So this angle here is what we're searching for. So remember that angle and this angle are the same and they all have to add up to 360. So we have x plus x plus 90 plus 110 is equal to 360. 2x plus 200 is equal to 360. Did I say 200? I hope I said 200. It's supposed to be 200. Subtract 200 from both sides. 2x is equal to uh, 160. Then we need to divide by 2 on both sides. And that means that the measure of angle HGK is equal to 80 degrees. All right, next one. HJ is 7, that's this one. Find HG, which is this one. Remember I told you that consecutive sides are congruent, so HG is 7. Alrighty, and then HG is 7, so that's this one. GR is 5, so that's this one. Find HR. So this is another Pythagorean theorem problem. This is 90 degrees. So HR squared plus... 5 squared is equal to 7 squared. HR squared plus 25 is equal to 49. Subtract 25 on both sides. And then we're going to put the answer over here. HR squared is equal to 24. Take the square root of both. And HR, we need to reduce this because this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And the square root of 4 is 2. So HR is 2 times the square root of 6. And that's the end of our notes.